Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to do a review for Diablo 4 today. If you're a subscriber to the channel then you will have noticed already I've been doing a lot of content on that game. I really did enjoy it but you know not everything about the game was perfect. I don't want to shill it so I want to give you my honest review today. First thing that I want to jump into, I'm going to go ahead and be positive right off the hop. Because talking about the campaign, I want to say it hit so good. I truly loved the campaign, and from what I see online, it looks like most of the community did as well. The storyline was super good, very, very interested, and honestly, I didn't know who to root for. So if you haven't played the game, I don't want to get too in-depth, but uh, there's basically your good and evil character, right? You have Inarius, who is... A fallen angel and then you have the demon or they call her the daughter of hatred Lilith and it's not as cut and dry as you would think you know Lilith has a couple redeeming qualities and Arius has of course some great qualities too he's pretty glorious in battle but also he's flawed and so it's just a really really interesting story and I was left not once again knowing who to even root for to me that's great storytelling especially for a video game um, I just kept on wanting to get further in the game so I could actually find out what was happening next. To me, huge green flag in a game. The cutscenes, I, <laughs> you probably have seen some of the cutscenes because I've seen playlists pop up of like best video game cutscenes ever. And there's one where Anarius is leading a battle into hell to fight Lilith. It is beautiful. Like that one specifically is amazing. And it has showed up on multiple playlists that I see popping up in my feed for, like, best video game cutscene ever. Uh, but there's a lot of other ones that just gave me, you know, absolute chills. The game starts with a banger right off the bat, so I could probably name, like, seven different cutscenes that I absolutely love. If you want, you can check out my channel. I've, I've made the game into a full movie, one that I'm trying to narrate myself, but another one where I just took all of the... Uh, important clips throughout the entire game as well as the cutscenes stacked them together so check that out if you have the time super super good campaign but oh one more point i want to add on as well the voice acting okay i've just got finished a couple other games i want to make a comparison here with fire emblem and maybe that's not a game that everybody knows but in fire emblem not every single character necessarily has a voice uh whereas in this game Every single character, every side character, everyone you talk to is given a voice. You're not just reading dialogue. And they didn't just do like any generic voice, right? It's high quality. There's a character in there named Lorath. And and maybe I'm just gonna play you actually uh, just a clip of his voice. It's chilling. Yeah, they got some high ranking voice actors in this. Uh, some of them that actually played in Game of Thrones. So anyway, I could nerd out on this. Pretty mind blown and I love it. 10 out of 10 on the voice acting. All right, let's move on into the gameplay. So I have to say, I watched some gameplay of this game before ever touching it, and I was disgusted, to say the least. And that sounds super harsh, I know, but there's just so much going on. I've got this like ADHD brain, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, what the heck? This is, there's, there's too much. It, there's never basically a, a single second in the game where you're not fighting like 20 people at once. You're killing them. You're seeing all these numbers pop up, all these items, bags of gold, blah, blah, blah. It's too much. I was like looking at it. I was like, I don't even want to touch this game. But I bought it because you know what? Diablo 3 was a good time. And I figured, you know, let's jump into this. You know what? I got to admit, when you're actually in the gameplay, it doesn't feel like too much. It feels right. And the other thing that I like is... If, if you're the kind of person who really likes to grind out in a game, right? Fire Emblem was another example of that. You have to level up all your characters. Diablo is another one of those games, right? Leveling up for me, just grinding a character out, that's a ton of fun. So that's something that I really liked about this game as well. And the game does a good job of it. It makes you hungry for XP, at least for the majority of it. But I would say, I think you can max out at around level 120. But by like level 80, it's just so slow and the incentive is, is so little, right? Like to go up one extra level and just get a little bit better 
when you're grinding and grinding and grinding, you're fighting the same monsters over and over. It's just too repetitive. So I gotta say, I had a ton of fun grinding on my character until I didn't. And that wall just, just comes up out of nowhere, I would say, at around level 70 or 80. Trust me, if you play the game, you're gonna feel it. Just fatigue of getting an XP and you'll be over it. But, um, but anyway, like, you know, these games can't be fun forever, so... Uh, it was really good for, for the time that it had. So this game requires you to play online, which I like in a sense. It disincentivizes cheating. You know, people aren't able to just keep duplicating weapons and stuff. That's a good thing, right? You know, that'll make a game boring really fast if you're doing that. But I don't know if this was an issue with their servers or if things were just unstable because so many people wanted to play this game. I know it was very popular, so maybe it's that, right? I, I got this game week one, so obviously the servers are taking a heavy load. Uh, and hopefully by the time you're watching this video, things are starting to slow down. I did jump back on the game today just to get uh, a general feeling of if the servers are getting better. Uh, I would still say they're not up to what I would consider to be par, but you know, hoping for the best on that. If I had one suggestion, uh, I want that part fixed, right? Last thing I want to say, I don't have a ton of complaints. I know maybe it's sounding like I do, but it's just about the classes, right? I, I don't feel like they're balanced. Um, if you're going to be fighting another person online, right? That, first of all, is the only reason that you need to max your character out. Like I said, it's going to get boring after level 80. By no means do you need to be level 80 to defeat the final boss, Lilith. Like, you don't even need to be that level. So you definitely don't have to go past that. So if you are trying to go past that to level 120, it's because you want to fight other people. But here's the thing. Every single class is, is it shines in a separate level range, right? So let's use, for example, rogues. Level 1 to 60, they are unreal. You know, if I got to be capped at level 60, I want to be a rogue 110%. But druids, on the other hand, they start to shine most after level 60 and then onward so if i start with a rogue and i want to fight somebody and i want to grind my character out to a level 120 i know i'm losing to a druid it's not even fun to get into that fight in the first place so i think that's a little bit lame i would like if you know every class did shine equally although in a different way um, at those higher levels it could be a little bit more balanced but that might be something for them to work on in future games so let's end this kind of on a positive note. I feel like I've been trashed in the gameplay a little bit too much. At the end of the day, the graphics are fantastic still, even like during gameplay, I love it. Uh, and the early game grind, like I said before, is gonna be a fun time for you. There is a skill tree involved in this as well, which is super built out. And like I said, even though there are those imbalances, your best shot at kind of correcting that is through this skill tree so it's a super super nice tool to have so how can i wrap up how i feel about this game in just a couple sentences here let me try it this way all right i'm going to give the campaign a straight up 10 out of 10. i'd literally buy the game just for the campaign that being said i beat the campaign in two days and i did not feel incentivized to play online much at all afterwards to this day I still want to learn more about the characters and that sweet, sweet lore, you know? But once I finish the campaign, to be honest, I'm more likely to go and watch a YouTube video about the game than to actually touch it again. Thank you everyone for watching the video. If you liked the video, please give it a like and also consider subscribing because we have a ton more content just like this that's going to be coming your way soon. Lots more reviews for every game as it comes out. We've got a ton of story breakdowns, like I said before, doing narrations of games and just having a whole lot of fun with it. That's all for now, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.